Okay, so now let's move on to recording actual audio tracks. So we've dealt with some audio type tracks with the loops, but we haven't actually plugged in a guitar or set up a microphone and recorded something. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so the first step is we are going to, just like we did with our instrument track, we are going to create a track. So with our loops, we let dragging it in create a track for us. With uh, the audio files like this, we're going to create our own track. Okay, so let's go ahead and Command Shift N is new tracks. The same as going to Track New or Control Shift N on a Windows computer. Okay, and this is where a lot of people, when they're starting out, get kind of hung up on this whole concept of mono versus stereo. And so what we have to deal with here is a lot of people, they want a stereo track because it's going to be stereo in the end and they want it to be able to be in both speakers and everything. And But what a lot of people don't realize is that anything that is mono is sent out stereo. So any mono source has a stereo output and that's we'll deal with panning later but you can basically leave it right in the middle where it comes equally through both speakers or you can move it towards one side or another where it comes more out of one speaker than the other or headphone or whatever channel okay so when we're deciding if we want a mono or stereo track it all depends on the source so in this circumstance I've plugged in a, a guitar and so I want a mono source because there's only one guitar being plugged in okay if I had a microphone plugged in and a vocalist it would be the same thing I just want a mono track because there's just one audio source one microphone Okay, if I had two microphones on an acoustic guitar, let's say, then I might want a stereo track because I have two, two sources. And those two sources could be assigned to left and right speakers, which is what will happen if you create a stereo track. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little, a little bit more sense. I've had a lot of people that have gotten hung up on that. And so hopefully we can get through that without too much pain. Okay, so what we want to do is create a single mono audio track. It's the default one because it's going to be what you use most often as you're recording real instruments. Okay, if you're recording a vocal, that's the one you want. If you're recording a guitar part, that's the one you want. Okay, we'll hit create. And there it is. There's our audio track defaulted to the name Audio 1. And I'm going to show you a little something here. One thing that drives me crazy is when people just leave these default names up. And the reason why is because when you record a track, and we're just going to hit record here, I'll hit command spacebar. Okay. So we're not really recording anything. But you'll notice when it records, see that name right there? Audio1 underscore 01. Okay. The name of the region and the name of the audio file are all going to be based off of the name of your track. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and change this to Guitar 1. A little shorthand for guitar there. Hit OK. And watch, now I'm going to record just a little later and watch the difference. <laughs> Okay, so now my audio file is actually called guitar1 underscore 01. Now the difference is when you have a hundred different elements in your mix and all of them are called audio1 or audio28 or audio73 or whatever, it's really hard to figure out which one is your guitar part and which one's your vocal and etc, etc, etc. Okay, so if you go through and just simply name your track before you record it, it can it can ease a lot of hassle that you might encounter later on. Okay? So we're gonna go ahead and well, we'll just hit undo so that those disappear. You see you see how they disappeared from a regions list there? So those tracks will actually be deleted off the hard drive because I undoed it. Undoed it. That's a that's an interesting word. Undoed it. I undid it. Okay, so we have to rename this because it got deleted in our undo. Okay, so there it is, guitar one. And we didn't actually pick up the guitar because it's not plugged into input one. 
on this system it's actually input eight okay so there's my raw guitar right there now one of the cool things about recording guitar in Pro Tools is that you have a nice little default, a couple default plugins that come with Pro Tools that you can use to process your guitar as you're recording or and change them afterwards as well. So right now I just have this guitar plugged straight in. So this is all that's all just solid straight line, you know, DI input guitar, no processing, nothing like that on it. So what we want to do is we want to put this as if it's going through a guitar amp. And so if we go to our plugins, go to harmonic, we can go to 11 free or sans amp, and either one of these is going to give us the effects of going through a guitar amp. So okay. So there's the default, a little crazy there. We can go to our clean and bright here, and now... A little different, not too different from the, the, the dry, but it's got a little bit of thickness and warmth to it from this amp, okay? So, and you've got a lot of controls here that we can do, and we'll play with that in a minute. But for right now, we've got a nice little guitar sound that we can use as we're recording. Okay, so at this point, we want to go ahead and, and hit record and do a little recording. So we'll get back to the beginning and command spacebar. Okay, so there we go. We've got some information recorded there. And now we can take off our record enable and play it back. Okay, so what we can do with this, this is the great thing, is what we've recorded is we've recorded just the dry guitar. We're playing it through this plugin, but we haven't recorded the effects of this plugin. So if we wanted to, we could change the sound. to the beginning and you'll notice we did some chords there we actually turn on our tremolo okay so we could go in here and we can actually we can do a lot of stuff we can duplicate the track right click on it here and hit duplicate okay and so we could take one of these tracks, get rid of that beginning part, and the other one, and get rid of the end, change the settings back to the clean and bright, but then turn on the tremolo this time. Okay, and then we can create a nice little loop out of this. Just like the loops we used before, we can create our own loop. Okay.
Okay, so we can hit Command T, which will trim to that one little spot there. And because we we're in grid mode, we were able to easily make a loop out of that. So let's just throw it back to the very beginning. Hit Command D for duplicate. Okay, and you can see now we've got this great loop happening. So we turn off our option click on the solos. Okay, and we can change this name. Instead of Guitar 1 Duplicate, we can call it Rit Guitar, Rhythm Guitar. And we'll see how that sounds played back. <laughs> Okay, so you can see how what we've done there is we've taken a single take on the guitar, split that into two different tracks, and done some different processing on the parts that were done like a rhythm guitar and different processing with the parts that were done like a lead guitar. And now they can both play with each other. Okay, and it doesn't necessarily sound like it's the same guitar playing right over itself because we've changed up the processing a little bit. Okay, so you know, it's really cool doing it this way because you could go ahead and just like jam with the track and maybe you have a couple different parts that you do and you realize, man, that part would be great looped on a different track. And you just take it, throw a different setting on it with 11, and, and now you've got a different track than the one you were just recording and as well as the one you're recording too. Okay, so obviously we've got some some little tweaks that we need to do with that lead part so we're gonna do some more audio editing with that we'll talk about elastic audio in just a moment <laughs> 